I hope that you're having a wonderful summer and that you haven't waited until the very last minute to start your summer assignment. Um, but I'm making this video to help you go through some of the math and please if you have um, other questions especially on the basics um, let me know send me an email because these are the basic math skills that you need to have mastered um, without a calculator before you can truly be successful in apes this year so we're just going to look at a few samples and again, if you have questions, let me know. And these are all taken from the math review sheet that is part of your summer assignment. You will not hear me say, oh, I love zeros. Keep them all in there. I'm going to say to you this year a hundred times, use scientific notation. And the reason is that normally when you're working with a lot of numbers, it's not going to be just two numbers that you're working with. It's going to be a whole series of them. And it's much easier to do this if you're using scientific notation. You'll find this in your other sciences as well. So let's say we're looking at number five here. Um, 500 billion times 35,000. That's a lot of zeros. So first thing is we're going to write this in scientific notation. So hopefully you remember this, right? Five times 500 billion be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, right? Ten to the eleventh. And you're multiplying that by three point five times ten. Same way, just counting over ten to the fourth. Now, the way you multiply with exponents um, in scientific notation is you just say five times three point five, so five times three is fifteen. And then 5 times 0.5 would be 1.5. 15 plus 1.5 is 17.5. Could also write that out. Do not use a calculator. You have picking up your calculator, put it down. So 17.5, that's 5 times 3.5 times 10. And then we're just going to add the exponents. So when you're multiplying in scientific notation or with exponents, you add them. So it would be 10 to the 15th. You could leave your answer like this. The other thing you could do is to rewrite that as 1.75, and since we moved over one more place, times 10 to the 16th. So either answer would be acceptable. They are the same. You could also, if you really wanted to, write this out with you know all of those zeros, but I'm not sure why you would do that because that's just going to take a lot of time. If you are dividing, such as in you know, question six, for example, remember, instead of adding the exponents, you just subtract them. Keep in mind, negative numbers. Um, so if you have questions, additional questions about using scientific notation and calculations, again, send me an email. For questions when you have to switch from one unit to another, and often to another and then another, you want to be using dimensional analysis, or you might call them ladder conversions. Um, and for these questions, it's absolutely okay to use your calculator. Um, normally on the APES exam and on tests that we have in class, your numbers will not be as complicated as this. They'll be more straightforward. And often the rule of thumb is if the numbers are too complicated or too difficult to calculate without a calculator, then something is wrong. So anyway, let's look at question number nine. So we have a 100 square mile area of national forest is how many acres? Now you're going to have to use the appendix in the back of your book to get some of these conversion factors. But we're going to start with our known. We have 100 miles square of forest and when you look in there is no conversion in the back of your, your book from square miles to acres but we can figure out how many feet um, square feet in a square mile so we have 100 square miles we know that one square mile is equal to 2.788 times 10 to the 7th square feet. And then also using the appendix in the back of your book, you know how many square feet in an acre. Remember we're always putting this so our units will cancel out. So there are 
4.356 times 10 to the 4th square feet in one acre. If we do this, that will cancel out, this will cancel out, and we'll be left with our wanted unit of acres. Again, use your calculator, and when you use your calculator to do all of this, you're going to get 6.4 times 10 to the 4th acres. So you would do the same thing going from acres to hectares. It is very, very important that you always write the units in each step of this process um, because that's where people often forget something or miss one little bit um, maybe forget that, oh, we're not dealing with just feet, we're dealing with square feet or cubic feet. So keep that in mind, write out all of your work, and that way if your answer doesn't match, you can go back and find out where it went wrong. So questions 9 through 13, use your calculator, um, go to town. Another concept that you'll have to be comfortable with is working with percentages. So um, I'm going to actually look at two of these here. Let's start with... 14. Um, so a natural gas power plant is 60% efficient, which would actually be pretty good. We'll talk about efficiency a lot when we get to our energy unit. Um, we'll also talk about it with ecology. So if one cubic meter of natural gas provides 1,000 BTUs of electricity, how many BTUs of waste heat were produced? So we don't actually have to worry about the cubic meter of natural gas. We don't need to know that. But 60% efficient means 0.6. Right, so 0.6 of whatever the total amount of BTUs that could be produced um, is equal to 1,000 BTUs. So we're trying to figure out how many BTUs total are produced and then what's wasted. Right. So if 0.6x is equal to 1,000, then that means, and this is number 14, should have done it in pink, sorry, um, is equal to 1,000, then x is equal to 1,666, yep, 0.7 BTUs, okay? So this is our total, okay? That's not our answer, though. Notice in the question, it says how many BTUs of waste heat were produced. So this is our total that we just calculated, the 1,000 is the amount of electricity, so we'd have to subtract 1,666.7, subtract from that 1,000. So our answer, okay, think about waste BTUs, is 666.7. Okay, so that is 14. Let's also look at 17, which is another percentage question, but very different. Um, so concentration of mercury in a water supply changes from 65 ppm, ppm is parts per million, to 7 ppm in a 10-year period. What is the percentage change of mercury concentration? This is a great thing. We don't want mercury in our water supply. If you don't know why, we'll talk a lot about it. When we're calculating percent change, this is something that you have probably done in other science classes. For example, in biology in the osmosis lab, you calculate percent change. So percent change, it's always going to be the change, okay, or final minus original divided by the original times 100. So in this case, you would say 7 ppm, it's our final value after 10 years, minus 65 ppm divided by the original, 65 ppm. And then you will multiply that value by 100% to get it into a percentage. Do not leave it as a decimal. So 7 minus 65 is negative 58. That makes sense. We want a negative number because it is a decrease. And 58 divided by 65 gives us 0.89 times 100. So that gives us negative 89%. Finally, let's look at one of these energy problems with BTUs. British thermal units. Um, we'll look at number 18. So it says, how much energy is required, required to raise the temperature of 1,000 gallons of water by 25 degrees Fahrenheit? And we need to know the definition of 
a BTU, so the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. And we also know the density of water. We don't need to worry about grams and milliliters right now because we're using with you, working with the U.S. Um, measuring, so eight pounds per gallon. So in this case, if we have 1,000 gallons of water, and we know, we're going to use our dimensional analysis, that one gallon has, it weighs eight pounds, we want to raise all of this by 25 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we know that one BTU be necessary to raise one pound by one degree Fahrenheit. This one looks a little bit different. There's nothing on, underneath 25 degrees Fahrenheit, for example. But if we check all of our units, remembering that we want to find out how much energy, and in that case we're talking about BTUs, gallons cancels out, pounds cancels out, degrees Fahrenheit cancels out, and we'll be left with BTU. So 1,000 times 8 times 25 gives us 200,000 BTU, or if you were using scientific notation, maybe you wrote 1,000 gallons as 1 times 10 to the 3rd, etc., and then maybe you end up with 2 times 10 to the 5th BTU as your answer. Either way, they're the same thing. So again, we will go over, I will give you guys the correct answers for these questions at the beginning of the school year, and then if you have, you know, if there's one thing where you're like, oh, I thought I understood this, but this one number is off, we can go over that. But if you're really stuck um, as to how to do this math, please, please contact me and plan on getting some extra math help early in the year so it doesn't hold you back during the rest of the year. All right, good luck.